Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell. My name's Matthew Kidman and I'm joined today by Ben Rundle from NAOS and Michael Wayne from Medallion. And we are talking about the big end of town, those companies that are big and very resilient. Michael, we'll start with you. REA, one of the great companies of Australia. It's had been on hard times lately with the downturn in the housing market. Buy, hold or sell? Look, it's a very high quality business. Probably hold at the moment. It's just a very tough point in the cycle for it. Uh, twice as much viewing time, if not more, than the nearest competitor. Um, nine out of ten real estate agents use their businesses. They've done an incredible job in boosting margins uh, throughout the early part of the cycle. But management have flagged with the elections coming up, things could get more challenging. So hold for now, but a good long-term hold. Okay. They've already reported, yep. probably beat, but yep. they were pretty pessimistic about the next six months. Yep. Buy, hold or sell? They were. I think it's a buy. Look, I might not call the bottom here at the moment, um, but you know, I think one of the best bits of investment advice I got was look at the companies that are taking market share in an industry that's in a downturn, and REA is certainly exhibiting that quality. It's a very, very high quality business, um, so it might not be the bottom, but I think it's a buy. Okay. CSL reported today was down a few percent. Buy, hold or sell? I think a sell. Um, I think it was a weak beat, so I think that's why the market's selling it off today. Um, R&D was lower, sales and marketing costs were higher. I think that's potentially trying to tell you something. So I think it deserves a P PED rate for the time being and gets put in the sin bin, so sell for now. Michael trades on about 40 times, give or take a point. Do we end up with blood on our hands if we buy this, or is it a buy, hold or sell? Look, I think it's looking more like a hold at the moment. It um, has been a buy sort of around that 175 level, but the, today's result was a little bit on the softer side, despite the fact that it upgraded its, its forecast slightly. Um, the fact is this business does trade on very high multiples, but it does spend a lot on research and development, and it accounts for that immediately, as opposed to sort of blending it out over, say, a five, 10 year period. So that has the effect of depressing earnings, pushing up the PE. Um, there is a bit of competition emerging from a, a pharmaceuticals company from Japan called Takeda. Um, so it's something to keep an eye on, but a very high quality business that's performed consistently over the last couple of decades. Okay, let's hit the road. Transurban. It's also yeah. had its result out. Bit of a lukewarm response, buy, hold or sell? I've got a sell on Transurban. The fact is the free cash flow that's been generated in recent years, they've spent far more in capital expenditure, far more in dividends. So in order to maintain that growth trajectory that people have become used to, they've either got to raise capital. The alternative is for the business to turn into a more bond-like security uh, where it just delivers a consistent income as opposed to much growth. So people forget that toll roads can be a risky business. Some of their early forays into the US were not very successful. Some of their forays into Europe as well haven't been that good. So I'm a seller of Transurban here. I pay a lot of tolls, Ben. Yep. Feels like, feels like a good business. Well, and buy, they, hold or sell. Pay, it's, I, I think it's a sell. You pay a lot of tolls and they do increase prices as well. So yeah, it is a very good business, but I don't think it's an own at any price. Um, I think Michael's point's a good one about them spending a lot of cash compared to their free cash flow. We've seen North Connects be delayed. So potentially that delays some of the cash that comes into the accounts and potentially that messes with their distribution. They got a kick up recently from the move in bond yields and I don't think they're going to get that again. So I think it's a sell. Okay, you're on a roll. Give us one that is awfully resilient and has got price upside for us. Yeah, a little bit of a cyclical, so I wouldn't call it awfully resilient, but James Hardy, um, I think is a buy. Uh, look, again, very high quality company. I think the earnings growth will come from North America and we've started to see some of the economic data out of there start to improve. Um, exceptionally high quality management, very hard to compete with in taking market share. And it's very um, uh, rare that you get it at this valuation. So I think James Hardy can buy. Okay, Michael. Something you've got that you've spotted that's big, yeah. resilient? Looking across the ditch uh, to Chorus, it's an ASX listed business, um, but basically it's the largest telco in New Zealand. They own the old copper network and essentially they're building the new broadband network and rotating customers from the old copper network onto the new network. Uh, 2019 is expected to be their last big year of CapEx. So you can expect going forward as CapEx starts to decline, free cash flow will pick up and you can expect to pick up in dividends as well. Uh, they don't pay any franking credits, which might actually work in its favour. If Labor's franking credit reforms get up, you might see a movement away from some of the high franking businesses and these start to become more attractive on a relative basis. So I think Chorus uh, is a good quality business. Despite the run-up, I still think it's got more legs. We'd all like a bit more resilience, but at the moment, the market's just not paying for it. 